Okay, so today we're doing the poem Vultures, and the first thing that you need to know is that the title is a bit deceptive. So initially, um, it will talk about vultures, and then it will move on to talking about a commandant um, during World War II with the concentration camps. Okay, in the grayness, so the grayness indicates like a tone of gloom you know and it's just like it's the weather um and it just gives a sort of tone of gloom and then it's uh in the grayness there's also a pathetic uh fallacy because it also kind of determines the mood or um kind of says what kind of mood there is uh by the weather and then it says and drizzle of one despondent dawn unstirred by harbingers. Okay, so the alliteration of the D creates kind of like a harsh sense of like it just it just makes everything kind of harsh. Um and it's kind of like to add to the mood of the poem. Um yeah. Then it says of sunbreak of altar perching high on broken bone of a dead tree nestled close to his mates his smooth bashed in head okay so now these like things that indicate death here creates a somatic field of death basically this just means that all of these words here create like a sense of um death because it's like a broken bone dead tree bashed in head um yeah then it's a pebble on a stem rooted in a dump of gross feathers. Okay, so now, now the poet is describing how the vultures look. And basically he's saying it's like a huge clump of feathers. And you know like a flower has a stem. So it's like a stem rooted in these disgusting feathers. And then like a little pebble is the head. So that's how he's busy describing these vultures. And then it says inclined affectionately to hers. Which... Apart from this disgusting imagery here, it's kind of like they're talking so affectionately about something really disgusting. It's like you wouldn't associate vultures um, capable of any like thing good. Yesterday they picked the eyes of a swollen corpse in a waterlogged trench and ate the things in its bowel. So basically um, the vultures were eating a corpse and they ate the things in its like stomach and full gorged they chose their roost keeping the hollowed remains in easy range of cold telescopic eyes okay so they ate till they were full so full means like they gorged um, or gorged means that they full and then it's like also saying that um they kept an eye on the hollowed remains so basically, it's like they picked this carcass, well, they picked this corpse so dry that it's essentially just a carcass that's left over. And then cold telescopic eyes, it's like kind of like void of any emotion. And that's also like kind of like when they talk about the affection that these vultures are sowing to each other. And then you get this like range of cold telescopic eyes. It's just like, how are they capable of love? Then it says here, strange. Indeed, how love, in other ways so particular, will pick a corner in that charnel house. So this is where, like, bodies get burned. Um, tidy it and coil up there, perhaps even fall asleep. Her face turns to the wall. So now her is actually love being personified. Um... And essentially what they're saying here is that love needs like certain things to grow and uh, yet love can also like grow and thrive in the most absurd circumstances. Then they say here, that's the commander at Balsam, camp going home for a day with fumes of human roast clinging rebelliously to his hairy nostrils. Okay, so now they're busy saying here what this guy's done. So he's just burned um, the Jews 
at a concentration camp and he's got the smell of like their dead bodies stuck to his nose uh, like stuck in his nose like he can still smell um the human roast so like this is also depicting like something quite awful and disgusting as well okay and then we'll cling rebelliously to his hairy nostrils we'll stop at the wayside sweet shop and pick up a chocolate for his tender offspring now this is kind of like you would think what he's just burnt bodies of innocent people and you know he's depicted as quite a disgusting man incapable of love and then they say here he will stop at the wayside sweet shop to pick up a chocolate for his children so it's kind of like how can something so evil be capable of love and I mean his children must probably see him as you know a man full of love so it's very like depicting like with the vultures I mean they're seen as disgusting creatures and yet they're actually capable of love whereas this man is actually um, a disgusting person and yet he is capable of love as well then it says here praise bounteous providence so basically it's saying here um praise god if you will that even grants an ogre a tiny glowworm tenderness encapsulated in icy caverns of a cruel heart okay so it's like praise god if you find it so like good that god can even grant the most evil of people you know sense of love or like a tiny glow worm of good like goodness in them or would you praise god or despair god for that in every germ of that kindred love is lodged in the perpetuity of evil so it's like should you rather thank god that um evil people are capable of good or should you be like worried that good people are capable of evil and that's kind of like what this poem is about should we thank god that an ogre which is like the vultures i mean you see them as you know something disgusting but they're actually not bad i mean they have something good in them and then well in fact they're actually good and they have no evil in them they're just depicted as something quite evil and yet you get the commandant who isn't a good person yet he has he's capable of good and it's kind of saying like which which do you think is worse or which do you think is better and yeah so that's kind of like what I can do for you in this poem just to like give you a little bit of idea um as to what the poem is about so I do hope this helped you